Hey guys and welcome to a new series where I spread some of the rumours that are on the camera rumour mill right now. Let's kick this one off with the biggest one that I've seen for a long time and that is the EOS R5. The EOS R5 is rumoured to be fully announced on April the 20th. I assume with current world events that this will probably be streamed, kind of like what Xbox and Microsoft did with Inside Xbox this week. However, I'm really hoping that when Canon do it, that the service that they're streaming on has better connection because Inside Xbox was really buggy for a lot of people. So as we know, the EOS R5 is rumoured to shoot in a Monster 8K. Now it has been confirmed that this is going to use the full width of the sensor, but the skeptic in me is wondering why they're specifying the full width of the sensor. Is there any reason why that they're only specifying the width and they're not specifying the height? Is this going to be some kind of anamorphic style support? This might just be me being really skeptical based on the absolute tragedy that has been Canon releases as of late, but I'm really hoping that all of my worries are completely for nothing and that this is a proper full 8K 30p. We still don't have confirmation whether or not it will shoot 4K at 120 FPS. We know it's going to do 4K at 60, which is great, it's amazing. However, shooting a 4K 120 FPS would be a lot more beneficial than actually shooting 8K. Most people won't be able to cope with shooting 8K at the moment. So I don't really know why they will have included this without 4K 120 when 4K slow-mo is something that most people have wanted now for a very long time. The R5 should have a large capacity LP6 battery inside it, which is great news for someone like me who uses the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and has lots of those LPE6 batteries lying around. It's confirmed it will have 5 gigahertz wireless capabilities. It's also confirmed that it will have dual card slots. However, the nature of what those are hasn't yet been confirmed. I suspect one will be the CF Express card that the 1DX Mark III uses and the C500 Mark II uses, as this is probably the only way that you're going to be able to record 8K at any kind of decent quality as well as 4K 120 at any decent quality because an SD card at proper like either C log or high bitrate is just not going to be able to cut it. The other card will most likely be an SD card because that is you know the standard so I'm hoping they do have the ability to use the SD card for redundancy rather than just having the two cards completely separate and independent from each other. So coming along with the EOS R5, we have an 8mm f4 patent that has just been filed. Now there aren't really many details around this, however it is an RF lens, it's 8mm covering 180 degree view angle, it's a fisheye and it's an f4. Now I'm really hoping that this lens will live up to the rest of the RF line, I'm hoping that it will be a great addition. I'm wondering about the price, it's probably going to be about three and a half grand just based on what I know about the RF lenses and it's probably not going to hit until I'd say 2021, maybe early, maybe mid. Finally let's talk about something that very few are probably asking about but I feel is a very very important thing for Canon to be doing at the moment and that is to update their EOS M series of cameras. They recently released the EOS M6 Mark II, which is great, however it still has a flip up screen when Canon are one of the only manufacturers that are making high end mirrorless cameras with a flip out, very angle LCD screens, so I'm not quite sure why they did this, but if any, kind of, if any of the rumours are to be believed, then it will likely be an EOS M50 Mark II as well as an EOS M5 Mark II. It's also rumoured that the M series bodies will be accompanied by a few new lenses. Now, I don't know about you, but the lenses that they currently have are pretty diabolical. Like, I shoot with an M50 most of the time. For photos, I use EF lenses adapted with a Viltrox booster. That's kind of the only way that I found that I could get the exact lenses I want for the exact price that I want because most of the M series lenses are actually more expensive than better EF lenses. All right, so that about wraps things up for this rumors video. Don't forget to like, comment, get subscribed and like the bell to stay up to date for whenever I release a new video. If there are any topics that you want me to cover, feel free to leave them in the comments. Follow me on social media so you can either at me on Twitter or Instagram. And until the next one, see ya.